Hello, I'm Susan Shiwi, and I'm going to be showing you today how to do a beautiful landscape. I'll be using a special technique that'll make it easy. Join me. I'll be right back. Welcome to my workshop. I'm going to be sharing with you just a special technique that you can use on a lot of different paintings. Isn't that a beautiful landscape, that gorgeous mountain? I'll show you how easy it is to paint. What I've done here is I've started, but I'll show you what I've accomplished so you'll know how to do the same thing. On my paper, before I started, I put on a blocking agent. I call that blue block. And I'm going to come in and I first, very importantly, must take and go back and forth on a piece of bar soap. And it's just regular bath soap, but I am taking that so that I've got a lot of soap to protect the hair on my brush. Next, I'm going to dip in to the, what I call my blue block. And I'm going to pull this so that I can form uh, whatever shape I want. Now, on this particular painting. I've done my fence line. I've come down and I've put some little dots on here for flowers. I can pull it out to form tree shapes. Um, and I know a lot of times when I am doing something that I want to leave a detailed area, I can use this blue block and it will allow it to dry on there and it is heat sensitive. Now, it feels kind of rubbery when it's done. So, and I'll, um, when it's dry, I should say not done. Let's put the lid back on so I don't accidentally spill it. Uh, I'm going to come in, and because I've got protection on that brush, that's so protected that that's really an important first step because otherwise it could damage your, if your brush was dry, it could um, get in there and be hard to get out. So I'm just going to come back in, rinse my brush really good, nice and good. I'm going to take this, I'm going to get things over to the side, and we're going to start to do the painting. This here would be too wet, so I must let it dry. I don't want to put a hair dryer on it. Don't put it in the sunshine. Don't, uh, now it sounds like I a lot of don'ts. Come on, this is easy. It's just a few things to be cautious of. And so that if I put a hair dryer on there to speed up the drain, painting, it would glue it down. And I don't want to do that to the surface. And then I couldn't remove that blocking agent. Now this is all done, and I've done it the day before. Sometimes you could do it within a couple hours to before. It depends on probably where you live, how the humidity will work for you. So next, we want to start in on the painting. And this is dry. You can feel it's dry to the touch. And so I'm not going to have any problem. But when you feel it, it feels a little rubbery. I'm going to start in and I want to wet the sky area. So I'm going to get this uh, water container a little bit closer so that you can see that I'm coming up here. And the reason I can't set it on my table because my table's at an angle. And um, so I can just pick it up. It's easy to do. And hold on to this as it's coming and get it just a little bit closer. I want you to see as much as possible. And that way you can see just what I'm doing. I'll set this back down. Now, one of the things that's important as you're working, you want to make sure I can see right in a little section here. And I'm not certain whether you'd be able to catch it or not. An unpainted area. And what that means is it's unpainted by water. And what would happen is now and then it kind of grabs. So I want this nice and wet. I want it to have a good shine. Tilt your paper when you're working on it to make sure you've got it shiny. You can come back and re-wet it when you're doing landscapes with big skies. If I was doing one that, in fact, actually, um, I have done the one that I've got on the easel is larger than this smaller one I'm doing here. And I've done one even in a greeting card size. And the different sizes depends on how fast you paint. I could only paint so fast even with larger brushes. So I wanted to be able to show you this. And if I got a great big painting, we'd never gotten it done. 
And besides that, I think it's a little less intimidating for you if you start on something small. Let's go up to my palette here in just a second. And as we go to that palette, you're going to see that I've got my colors on it. And this is blue and this is uh, cobalt blue. Both of those need a little bit of dampening because it's been sitting out for a while. So I can come in with my spray bottle. I've got two different kinds of spray bottles. I've got a small one. It's handy for travel, and sometimes I put it around when I want something really a lot wetter. Get this big one. I really get serious about spraying, and it gets things good and wet. Now you'll see the pigment rolls down here, which is going to be helpful too, because then I can pick that up as I'm working. With that blue color, I'm going to start up high in the sky, usually starting with either cobalt or cobalt and ultramarine. I've got them in the same well uh, or this configuration here. And I do that because a lot of times I'll use a little of both. Because I've wet that, that color's diffusing down. I don't have to work at a wild pace. Look at I can even come in here and leave that be. And isn't that pretty for a cloud? So sometimes just wonderful things happen. But, I, but I'll continue on, put some turquoise on it so you can see how that works. A little bit of deep turquoise we've got is so pretty. And as it comes in, I want to be able to come down towards the top of the mountains here. And I'm going to come right over. And you can see where I'm painting over that blue block. Works well. It will resist the pigment. So you can think of pretty flower shapes and things. Now, one of the things as I'm going over that sky area, you can see where even though I'm going to put leaves in here, I didn't want to get a lot of deep color, but I did want to get color behind it. Next, we're going to go give my brush a rinse, and I'm going to go up to the purple color in on my palette. So let's look as I go up here to the purple. I've got a beautiful deep magenta. It's a newer color. And I've got violet. And I come back and forth with these. They're gorgeous colors. And I'm going to come over and get next to the blue. As you've seen how I put my colors out of my palette, you can see where they kind of go in families, almost like a rainbow. I'm going to think about when I start. What side of the mountain do I want to get into? So I want to pull this in and about. And that blocking agent's going to work for me. And I'm doing the left side. I get laughing sometimes as I'm giving directions. I seem to... Um, Try to think, what's my left hand? What's my right? So I make sure I give you the right directions. Do much better when I'm teaching than when we're in the car driving and somebody says, which way do I go? I think, ah. So look at that. First of all, there's this lavender color coming down here. And you can make adjustments in it. So I can come back in, and I can make this so much easier, more blue, more lavender. As you're working with it, uh, you can say, oh, look at that. Look how it's already taking shape. Variations in colors make it work. I want the blue lavender on the shadow side of my mountain. This is going to be my shadow side. Look how pretty those are. I get a little darker than what I want. I can come back in and lift color out, or I can block color out. Don't be afraid of getting some color in there. It's going to look way prettier for you. Oh, that's nice. Now, I don't want that to be too dark going behind the trees here. When you're putting color behind and you're using watercolor, it's transparent. So you want to be cautious that you don't get it too dark behind there. And I'm going to come over and do some lavender for some distant hills here using the violet, pulling that on across and down. Now in this section here, you can see where my white is. Um, it looks, actually, it looks pretty good the way it is. But I'm going to come in and put a little bit of soft because I've got that as a blocked area. Don't need to worry about it. And while I, it is appearing as though all my white area is going now, it'll come back in the end. After it's dry, I can pull off that blocking agent. Kind of work back and forth through these mountains. Look how pretty they are. Now, what I did, things to think about. Don't make these cut in half, so you've got one half going one way and one half going the other. Think about making pretty shapes. Think about keeping it soft. It's not hard to do. It's just things to think about. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is come down and pick up a little bit more blue. So let's look up at my uh, palette here with the blue. Here we've got it, and a little bit of indigo. And I'm going to add as well. I'm going to lift this up and pull this across unevenly. And as I can even turn the side of the brush, pulling this on through, you can see how I start to get the feeling of distant hill, uh, not distant hills, distant trees. 
pull that up, uneven, pull this through, lifting up, pull this on through, think about variations in shape, don't want to get it too dark behind there because I want to put leaves. Um, some things to think about too when you're painting, uh, I'm looking right here for a second and it, it's fine, but I wasn't sure it would seem to want to be pulling back off my paper for a minute. Uh, you don't want to put fresh hand lotion on right before you paint because if you do, you can end up as you're doing that causing a resist on your surface. So as you, you um, think about having oil or any grease on your hands, don't touch your paper because it'll leave a mark on there and you won't be able to get it out. Now, look at that. Looks like a tree line back in there. Isn't that easy to do? As I put in my tree line, I deliberately tried to vary it. So I'm trying to think about variations. Now, next, I'm going to come down. We're going to put my brush in my well, and I want you to look in my water container. So if you all will look down at this water container here, and, and I'm going to bring it up so that you can see me taking this, and the brushes that are sitting in there have been sitting there for a few minutes. And I call them my foliage brushes because they're bristle, and they make such great foliage. I'll go ahead and set this down. And um, the water will get into the brush and make it swell, and it makes it so much easier for you to do foliage and for me to do foliage. So let them sit if you can think about it for a few minutes before we start. Now let's go up to our green. We're going to get some green tones in here. And as I'm working with greens, I've got some great hooker's green and some, um, I've got hunter's green and a little bit of spring green, and I start tapping on here. And as I'm working, I'm going to just tap right along the edge, putting colors on unevenly. I'm really smashing that down. It's a bristle brush. I want to get a lot of variations going in there. I'm going to come down to my horizon. And you can see in there where the color has sort of, uh, you're starting to get variations of these. Now, if I want a really bright color in there, if you want spring looking, I can get the spring green and I can go up and pick up some yellow up here and then I can take it right back down to that tree area. I'm going to come in here, you can see how bright those are, and I can get as bright a greens and or as deep a greens as I want to get in there. Pulling this across, not forgetting to go over to the side, pulling this through. Now, as I'm doing that, I'm going, okay, I'm getting some variations, but I still want some darker areas. So when you come in, go back up and start light and go to slowly add a little bit more deeper color. So I'm going to get some indigo. I'm going to come back up here with a little indigo, a little bit more green. Don't want to get this too dark in here. Even some turquoise would be pretty. Think of variations. You can do these on small cards to begin with. Look at that. Those trees just pop right in there. Now, there's a tendency to want to overpaint. I've got some that I did when I was in college that I had to laugh about that was many, many, many years ago. And I painted every single leaf because I knew they were on there, on trees in the distance. And there's no way you see them. So you want to give the feeling of depth by creating it as you're working uh, with lights and darks and the illusion of things. And photographs are wonderful. Going out in location is just fantastic if you have an opportunity. Even if you don't paint, just to view things. Now, as I continue my way down, I'm going to come right on here, and I want to catch that color. See, I'm catching that with water, pulling that so that it's softening the edge, and I'm going to pull this right on through here to get the color starting on my field. So I'm going to come right on through, catching that so I don't have an uneven line, and I also have a very beautiful, see how this already, it's pretty, you know, I'm going to put some yellow in it. You may have said, well, I wish you'd left it the color it was. You know, when you go to paint these, you know, remember, it's going to be your painting. This is just technique that I'm sharing with you so that you will um, know how to go about doing some of these things. And if I do something that you don't feel comfortable with, um, even that's a part of learning. You can go, well, listen, I saw her do that, and I'm not going to do that at all. Look at this, how nice that looks. There's variation of colors. It already looks like there's something in the field. I'm going to darken it just a tiny bit more as I come down towards um, the horizon, usually, and uh, not horizon, towards the foreground. Um, as you look into the distance, uh, the rule is usually it's lighter in the distance and deeper in color as it comes more forward. 
now there's always an exception, so don't ever just get stuck on a rule because rules are there to help you, but they can also be broken. And see how much nicer that looks. Now, I'm going to go back and get some more uh, greens in here, and I'm going to start as I come up, getting up into the green. I'm going to pick that up on my brush, smashing that brush down. You're going, she's killing that brush. It'll look better when it, it really takes shape. Actually, it works better now than when, they, when they're brand new. They're this real pretty, um, bright, look like clean bristle, and they never look that way again after you get starting painting the, and well, I suppose you could bleach them out, but who want to bother with that? So don't worry about it if they look stained. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm kind of tapping an uneven pattern in here, and that uneven pattern is going to be the uh, beginning for my leaves and my leaf shapes in here. So see how I'm just tapping unevenly? And believe me, don't think about um, just putting blobs of green out there. Think about what I want, you know, think about unevenness. Uh, think about getting that nice, delicate tapping and starting to get it on because I'm going to build my trees around those. And as I'm working, I continue to pick up some green, some indigo. Uh, if you've got more olive in your home, you go, well, I don't see any olive green out there. Take and put a little bit of orange in with your greens. If you want a more bright spring green, you can use, uh, we've got the color right there, pre-mixed. Or you can even, which I can have kind of the suns coming across, I'm going to lighten this up here. You can put some of these light areas in. And then I'm also going to come down towards the ground section. So adjust those colors. Don't be afraid of making uh, cards, because those cards are going to help you. Doesn't that look great already? Without doing a lot of detail, it makes it look like I've got more detail in there than you would think. Now, I'm going to come down, and I stepped up into that section or up into the tree area here because I wanted to let this area dry some. How quickly this will dry will depend on paper. It'll depend on humidity. And so there's a lot of factors, um, but this is already starting to dry, so I can come in here and put my ground area in. The reason I wanted it to dry was if I started to put the uh, edge of the path here in, before, while that was still wet, it, it would just kind of all fuse out. I'm going to pre-wet this area. It makes it easier for me. And as I'm working, I always try to pre-wet an area larger in a path section than what I want. The, there's a reason for that. It's because I want the foliage to look like it's coming back into it. So it kind of feels like it's coming in now. So I've wet way out over what I've kind of sketched. Let's look. I'm going to go up to my palette and get my yellows. And as I come up, I've got the color raw sienna way up here. And I'm going to take that down at the very start of my path. So brush this across, going across now. I pulled this down a little bit where I didn't want it, so I'm going to do this. See, I wipe that back. So you can make some adjustments. If I want, I can put a little brighter yellow into it. Now I'm building contour. So I go back up. I'm going to pick up some more yellow. And I want to make it up, picking up more pigment this time. Pulling this across. Now I'm going to go down to the corner and pick up my browns. A little bit of burnt sienna, and there's this great color called country brick. Kind of a terracotta color. So pretty. So I brush that across. And I'm starting to get the feeling of contour because as I do this, I'm pulling some darker color that I'm going to have underneath for shadow. And I'm pulling it across. I'm not pulling it straight. So I'm I'm starting to add contour. Next, more foliage. Foreground is always a bugger for some of you. For some reason, you go, oh, this foliage brush that I had wet sitting in there, it's going to make it easy. One of the things I've done is I've already blocked in here with a little bit of black. Those little blue dobs are that blue block. And so when I pull it back off, it'll leave white areas. If you want to put a lot of super detail in there, you can make them more perfect than I did. You can make them more daisy-like. But I want to have some blues in there because I just love the color blue. And um, I like color. I like them all. It's hard to pick a really favorite. Somebody said to me, so what do you like painting best? Which one? Do you like watercolor or do you like oil or do you like your acrylic? And as I think about it, it's like saying, do you like apples or bananas or pears best? I like them all. It's hard to, each one has their own qualities. It's really hard uh, to pick a favorite, and I've 
uh, been privileged uh, to be teaching and painting for so many years and just love to paint that I get to paint in all mediums. And I like the qualities of each. So it just kind of depends. It's, it's like being able to change music, too. You can depends on what my mood is. Now, the nice part about the watercolors is I can travel with them. Love to be able to keep, keeps me busy when I'm, um, I can't stand sitting still. Now, as I'm working in here, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to pick up some of my greens. So let's look and I'll go back in here as my palette is starting to dry. Back to, I want to get it wetter. I'm going to just wet that down. It's the easiest thing to do. If you're new to watercolors, these palettes are just great. They've got a lid that is great that I can snap on the top of them when I'm completed for travel. But all I have to do is come back in another day and add water to it. I could put these paints away for a month. I could put them away for, you wouldn't want to do that, but you could put them away for a year and take them back out. So the nice part is with watercolors, all you have to do is just, now look, I'm also talking and not thinking about instructing something. You want to lift up a little bit. Look at this. Look how easy it is to get that grass in there. Wow. Isn't that fun? Nothing to it. You don't have to paint every blade. Don't pull them straight. It's just as easy as can be getting that in there. I want to pull that in. So as I'm putting these colors in, I'm thinking about variations. Thinking about, look how great that looks already with lights and darks. Starting to look, just it looks so good. You think, oh, it took more time than that. So it doesn't. Use the right brushes. Come down here and let's pick up some yellow. Let's look here on my palette. So I'm picking up that yellow. You can see where I just dab into those colors. Don't be afraid to smash, smash that down. Smash and dab technique. Coming in and uh, coming through. Now, the one thing that can happen is you can get this so wet that all the colors were kind of blurring together. This way you can see where it almost looks as though I had painted more individually than what I've got uh, done on here. So that these brushes, again, trying to show you, I've taught for years and years and it's fun. I love, I, I enjoy watching people learn things because I love to learn things myself. And it's fun to have classes and watch people grow and discover new techniques. And no matter what, when you're painting, it's fun to watch other people paint, even if you've painted for a lot of years. Now, let me talk about what I'm doing right in here. Right in here, I'm tapping in. I'm starting to tap in what I'm going to connect some bushes. So I'm going to put some little lines in here. Over on this side, well, I better switch. Um, well, I'll tap in a little bit on both of these because it's about time to switch. I've got these about to the same spot. I'm going to pull this painting over, and I want to make sure that I can show you all the steps. Now you go, wait a minute, she's got all that pulled off. I've got to see how dry that is. It's dry enough that I can start pulling this off for you. And what I want to do is get some masking tape. I get laughing every now and then. I forget, forget to get my uh, tape around. And actually, this isn't masking tape. This is watercolor tape. And the reason for it is it's not as sticky. Uh, and it, but for pulling this off, masking tape would work. This happens to be uh, my watercolor tape, which is not quite as sticky. Look how easy that comes off. There is still inside of this body a young person that loves <laughs> to have fun with this and just watch it pull up and snap off. It reminds me of when I was, look at that, pulling through. It's fun to see how it comes off. It's so easy. And if you don't have the right stuff, it won't work. So let's go back in. We want to come over here. Enough of that. I pulled all these off, and I did the same thing up here. I pulled off those areas, and you can see where it ended up white, and my whites were showing through. Now, I want to come back in and show you how to finish this so that you can come in, and you're going to put browns, tones on each one of these, coming on your fence line. You can get lots of colors in there. Come on through. You're going to put browns on the trees. Look how those go in there. Isn't that easy? You get nice bright colors in there. You couldn't get those colors in if I had done that as I was working with, um, without leaving it unpainted. I couldn't get those ni nice bright tones. Now, as I pull this on up, you can see how you can come through and get the trunks in. 
And so the nice part about that blocking agent, it's going to work for you, was blue block that I used. I'm going to come back in and I want to put in just a little bit of yellow. Again, there have been no yellow left in there if I hadn't used that, used that blocking agent. I'm going to do the same thing with the trees on the other side. And because of time, I'm going to show you how you work on this side, because the tree on this side would be the same. You want to come back in and continue to put in like little details coming up with your uh, smaller tree trunks coming up. You want to come back in and deepen some areas so that you've got both lights and dark areas on those fence posts so they don't end up all the same color. Pull a little line across there to get your fence lines in. And then, once you get working on these, you want to come back in and put foliage so they end up looking like it's going to be inside. So as you're working in there, and I hope as you've been watching this, you're going to see it's going to be fun and easy to do a landscape just like this.